All right, in this video, we're going to continue to look at our phylogenetic tree of animals that are out there and consider these branch points that uh, are hypothesized to have taken place. And again, this is based on uh, a lot of evidence from looking at modern animals, from looking at um, fossilized remains of animals that are out there, and also nowadays looking at genetic data and using this to um, really compare the evolutionary history of the animals that are out there to think about where did these structures come from and can we find the ancestral species. And we saw that idea that the original kinds of animals that were out there were these colonial forms of cells and the modern descendants of those are the sponges that we see today. Um, some of those animals developed this ability to de um, form tissues with specialized function and we saw that through that process of embryogenesis and during this process of embryogenesis you start to get um, some body symmetry to develop and we look at this example of the diploblasts that are out there that are in the phylum cnidaria and those are the things like um, our jellyfish and our hydra that are out there that have those stinging cells um, but they have that radial symmetry that you can cut them in multiple planes um, and get left and right patterns coming out of that. And we saw that these organisms are really simple. They have two layers of tissues um, with a sort of jelly-like layer in between. And effectively, they have a skin, and then they have a gastrovascular cavity where they're going to do digestion, and their food is going to diffuse out, and then they get rid of the waste products through the same hole where they put the um, food in. And so an interesting kind of design, but it's worked because these animals have been around for millions and millions of years in the ocean. And what we want to take a look now is what happened with these um, ancestors of the animals that are out there. And when they started to become a little bit more complex, they started to develop inner layers. And that's where we start to look at our triplo, um, triploblasts, where they develop these three layers of tissue when they go through that process of gastrulation. And now that you've got three layers, you've got an outer, you've got an inner, and you can start doing a middle layer there. And they're going to develop um, different kinds of body cavities that can be used to distinguish the various kinds of animals that are out there. And if we look at some of this with the triploblasts that are out there, um, they're going to form an internal body cavity that's known as a coelom. And this is basically a cavity that lies between the digestive system and the uh, wall of the organism. And some of these triploblasts form a coelom that isn't quite complete. And so if you look closely at this um, acelomate right here, and when we take a look at that idea of acelomate, again, the A at the beginning means without. So these guys don't have a true kind of coelom or a body cavity here, which is distinguished from the rest of it. They do have three layers of tissue right here. But if you look, this middle layer right here that is derived from the mesoderm is just a tissue-filled region right there that is separating that endoderm from the ectoderm or the digestive tract from the external skin or covering on them. There is another type of coelomate out there that's known as a pseudocoelomate. So they have a fake body cavity here. And if you look at these guys right here, um, we find them in a variety of worm-like creatures that are out there. They do have that external body covering from the ectoderm. They do have that digestive tract from the endoderm. But notice this body cavity layer right here is um, really separated from that digestive tract that is formed um, in the middle right there. So you do have these muscle layers from the mesoderm. In this last version of our triploblast, we have what are known as the U coelomate. And the U, um, like eukaryotic, stands for true. So these organisms actually do have a true internal body cavity that is filled with fluid. Um, and when you look at this, um, you can again see those various layers right here. The skin or uh, body covering is coming from the ectoderm. 
your digestive tract from that endoderm that's all formed during gastrulation. But then if you look at the mesoderm layer right here, this tissue layer that is lining the body cavity, it comes exclusively from the mesoderm. So it is different from your pseudocoelomate because there they actually had multiple um, cell fates that were forming this tissue layer that is lining that internal body cavity. So we can use this to distinguish various kinds of animals that are out there. And if you think about this, this is a digestive tract. It's got two sides to that tube. You've got the mouth and you've got the anus. And so we can use this to distinguish our coelomates that are out there. And it's kind of an interesting distinction. Um, the two groups are based on what happens during early embryonic development. And remember, they can use lasers to knock out specific cells. And so they were able to use this process to knock out certain cells and determine which side of this coelom forms first during that gastrulation stage for embryogenesis. And look at that development of the digestive tube there. And it starts out forming as basically just sort of a blind little pouch or a, um, almost an outwelling of cells on the side of this mesoderm layer that we see right there. And if you are a protosome over here, proto, think prototype, so you've got the first thing. Um, these guys, the stome actually stands for mouth. And so what these guys are going to do is their mouth opening forms in the tube first. The deuterostomes over here the mouth opening is actually going to form second. So here, the first opening in the tube is what's going to eventually become um, the anus inside of these animals. So you can see, this is a major branch, board when we, branch point when we look at the phylogeny of our animals that are out there that have developed um, really specialized kinds of tissues here. And so this is going to give us two very diverse types or groups of animals based on did your mouth form or did your butt form first when you were an embryo. And if we look at um, what is known as the flatworms in this phylum platyhelminthes, and if you look at this, this literally means flat worms. Think plate and then helminths are the worms that are out there. These are the ones that are the acelomate. So they have that um, lack of any really good body cavity inside. They are effectively big chunks of tissues right here um, that um, don't have a lot of fluids inside. So think about the fluids inside of your guts that are there. And in order to make up for this process, what they do have is a gastrovascular cavity that is extremely branched. They don't have a complete digestive system because they are basically remodeling what we saw in the Cnidarians, which if you remember, gastrovascular cavity was one big hole inside of them, and then they had a mouth and an anus where the food was um, going in and out. And so if you look at these acelomates right here, they have branched that gastrovascular cavity so that food can get in and they can digest it, and then it diffuses out to basically get all over their body. Um, effectively, what they're going to do is um, they're going to remove their undigested waste through this same mouth that we have right here. So their food is not really going to be continuously processed, so a little bit different from what we see um, for the more complex kinds of animals that are out there. And um, we can look at some examples of the flatworms that are out there. So again, think about our taxonomic categories, domain, eukarya, kingdom, animalia, and now we're in the flatworm or platyhelminthes phylum. And within that group, we can see two representative types of animals that fit in the flatworms. Um, the trematodes over here uh, are flat as the name suggests, and they just have a single segment like this little guy here. Um, the ones that are parasitic in humans tend to live in your bile ducts, so a little tube that's going from your liver to your intestines is where they hang out, and they'll basically um, absorb some of your digested food through their skin and get some of it through that little mouth hole, and then the food can penetrate throughout their body. And within here, you can see uh, some of that digestive system. They also do have uh, male and female reproductive organs. So we can see that development of um, testes and ovaries here. Uh, if you look at your class Cystoda over here, these are known as tapeworms, and they're distinguished from the trematodes, because notice single body segment versus multiple body segments for the tapeworm. 
And the initial segment over here that you would ingest in something like an egg is going to hatch inside of your intestines, and that's going to release the scolex segment, which has these little hooks and little suckers that it can use to attach to the wall of your intestine. And then again, they are basically going to absorb your food through their skin right there, and it'll get into that gastrovascular cavity so that they can um, really allow that food to diffuse throughout their body there. Um, the interesting thing about a tapeworm is each of these proglotted segments that we see inside of here does have those um, testes and it's going to have ovaries for egg production and they do have a uterus for storing their fertilized eggs. So when we look at a tapeworm right here, they are hermaphrodites. They have both male and female um, reproductive organs that they can use to reproduce um, and effectively this is going to break off and travel down your intestines and then it's going to leave your body in your feces for somebody else to ingest the egg and enjoy the tapeworm. Um, people did used to take these to try and lose weight because they're going to absorb some of your food before your body does. Now, if we work our way over and look at our eucelomates, remember, these are the ones that have developed that true body cavity that is coming exclusively from the mesoderm, and then they're going to have this fluid-filled area in that surrounding area right there where that's where you have that coelom, that body cavity. And when we look at these eucelomates, not only do they have a true body cavity, but now they have a complete digestive tract with a mouth and an anus, which means now you're going to have one-way movement of your food. The other important feature when we see these eucelomates is they start to develop that body segmentation. They're basically repeating these body patterns along the length of um, the whole animal right there. So really you need one set of genes to code for that body pattern and then it just gets duplicated over and over and over and over inside of these guys. Um, if we look at some examples of uh, this group right here, now we're in our phylum Annelida, and you're looking at the annelids or worms that are out there. So here you can see um, a nice earthworm. Um, here you can see some aquatic versions of these worms in what's known as a polychaete, and these things that you see on the outside are actually their gills that they're going to use to breathe. Um, if you see earthworms on a sidewalk, during that process of when it's raining out, the reason the earthworms are there is they're actually drowning. They need to absorb the air through their skin in order to breathe and get access to the oxygen for aerobic respiration. These worms are actually using these gills to absorb some of the um, oxygen from the water right there. And here's a nice example of another one of these relatives of our worms and our polychaetes. This is a leech. And when you look at this leech right here, what it's going to do is effectively use its mouth to latch on to something else, and then it's going to suck the blood out of that. And they do actually in, um, inject anticoagulants in there to keep your blood from clotting. And some people are starting to use um, some of the leech chemicals to um, use them as anti-clotting agents when you undergo surgery.